Hi, and welcome to part two of getting started with Fleet Hub for AWS IoT device management. My name is Greg Breen, and I'm an IoT specialist solutions architect with AWS. To recap from part one, Fleet Hub is a feature of AWS IoT device management that enables you to visualize your device fleet through a single dashboard, streamline workflows with alarms and actions, integrate with our AWS IoT services, and manage your fleet with no code, all through a fully managed web application that you can generate in minutes. In part one of this demo, I configured the Fleet Hub web app. In this video, part two of two, I'll walk through a few use cases or scenarios of how I can monitor and manage my fleet. We'll use Fleet Hub to examine device disconnections, drill down on our fleet, perform an over-the-air firmware update, and create an alarm to detect misbehavior. To follow along, it's best if you already watched part one and configured the Fleet Hub web app. Let's quickly recap my device fleet. In this demo, I'm using a small fleet of physical devices here on my desk. These are a collection of devices from the AWS Partner Device Catalog, as well as commonly acquired parts such as a Raspberry Pi. Fleet Hub features, such as alarms and jobs, shall be demonstrated with these real devices. We return now to Fleet Hub and the dashboard device list. As we saw in part one, all six MQTT devices are connected and the LoRaWAN devices are reported as disconnected. Let's now make some MQTT disconnection events. First, let's cause a sudden power loss on STM32L4S5 beta. It has a keep alive time of 60 seconds, so AWS IoT Core shall detect a keep alive timeout after 90 seconds. While that's timing out, let's cause a more graceful disconnection on the Raspberry Pi. Here we see the AWS IoT device client. By sending a control C, we signal to device client that it should perform a client initiated disconnect. After a short delay, we see that both devices are disconnected, but with different disconnect reasons. In a larger fleet, we'd likely want to use a filter or search to drill down on the disconnected devices. Let's do that. We can drill down on a single device and see its details. Connectivity information, attributes, shadows, thing groups, and jobs. Let's now restore our disconnected devices and give them time to reconnect. Back to our filtered device list and we can see that no IP devices are disconnected anymore. Let's remove those filters and create another filter to sharpen our focus on just the LoRaWAN devices. You can remove columns from the device list. In the case of LoRaWAN devices, perhaps you don't want to see the MQTT connectivity columns. Note that Fleet Hub offers an export function if you want to keep a record of the currently displayed device list. Over to the summary now, and we can see that the filter also applies here. Cancelling the filter allows us to see the summary for the whole fleet again. Fleet Hub includes support for AWS IoT jobs. It has a page that displays the current status of all jobs in your account. Jobs can be initiated from multiple places. You can target a group from the Groups page. You can target an individual device by drilling down on it. And you can target an a la carte list of devices from the device list. In the device list, we add a filter for the STM32 L4 Plus Thing group. We can see that the Beta and Gamma devices are running older firmware than Alpha. As a fleet manager, we want to update them both to firmware 1.0.1. .1. 
To run a job from Fleet Hub, an appropriate AWS IoT job template needs to have been created first. I've already created one for the STM32L4S5 board and the 101 firmware. I select that and accept the default name for the job. Before running the job, let's look at the serial output from the Gamma device. This is a free RTOS device. We can see it polling the job queue once per second and publishing data every 10 seconds. As you can see, it's reporting that its firmware version is 1.0.0. Returning to Fleet Hub, we now run the job. And a short time later, the file starts streaming to the Gamma device. We can navigate to the jobs list in Fleet Hub and we can see that the new job is in progress. The file streaming concludes and the Gamma device reboots, validating and committing the new firmware image. A short time later, the new firmware starts up. The job completes successfully and the Gamma device reports that it's running firmware version 1.0.1. We can then refresh the jobs list and see that the job has completed. Drilling into the job, we see that both the beta and the gamma job execution were successful. Returning to the device list, we see that both the beta and the gamma device are reporting firmware version 1.0.1. .1. For the final part of this demo, We'll turn our attention to alarms, another great feature of Fleet Hub. Like jobs, alarms can be created from multiple places. Let's create one here from the device list. Alarms consist of three elements, a metric, a threshold and a notification. The target query is the current query or set of filters you have applied in your dashboard. As I had no filter applied, this alarm will apply to all devices in the fleet. We're going to use the accelerometer Z axis value to create an alarm that detects when a device is turned upside down. Therefore, we choose this value as the field. There are many aggregation types to choose from. We'll use minimum to find the minimum Z value across the fleet and a one minute time period for quicker response. The next step is to set the threshold. We want the alarm to activate if the Z value ever gets below zero. The next step is to configure notifications by creating an alarm email list. We then give the alarm a name and click next. We can then review our alarm configuration and finally, click Submit to complete. Navigate to Alarms to see our newly created alarm. It doesn't yet have sufficient data. We'll pause to give it time. We refresh a short time later and see that the alarm is now OK. Now for the fun part. Let's turn a board upside down and generate an alarm. After a couple of minutes, our alarm goes into an alarmed state. We restore the device to its correct orientation and wait a few minutes. The alarm has returned to an OK status. Drilling down, we can review the alarm configuration, see the metric history over a variety of time frames, and also the history of alarm status changes. Furthermore, it's possible to edit the alarm from this page. So that's a few different ways to use Fleet Hub to monitor and manage your device fleet. We covered disconnection events, how to use filters to dive deep, how to use jobs to perform firmware updates, and how to set up an alarm to get alerted if any devices in your fleet misbehave. Thanks for watching and please visit the AWS IoT device management webpage if you want to learn more.